This is a male patient who suffers from CRPS. The level of CRPS is at the upper tibia. He has complex tibial plateau fracture. He had a fracture in his femur, but the area of disability that he have is below the knee. So the plan is to do through knee amputation, and I'm going to take you through a proper through knee amputation procedure. Start by landmark, the knee joint, the patella. My planned incision is preferably going through previous scars. Medial lateral incisions are where I'm gonna extend my wound proximally and then we do our flap anteriorly and posteriorly. Try to utilize as much in flap as possible because you can always take more later on when you need it. If you cut it too short, then you will be struggling with face, especially the distal femoral part of the knee is very bulky. I use a tourniquet, preferably a sterile tourniquet. Start with the lateral incision and the medial incision. We take a flap anteriorly, approximately 15 centimeters below the joint line, and we take a flap posteriorly. With the flap, I go medial and lateral down directly to the bone. And you can see my extension of the wound is much higher than the knee joint itself. And that's to give me the freedom of mobilizing the flap as much as I want. If you take the whole layer of skin and the subcutaneous tissue, you will be able to mobilize large flap without compromising the blood supply. This procedure should not take too long, especially in the presence of a tourniquet and a CRPS. The less hypoxia to the tissue, the more ideal the situation is. We have performed proximal targeted muscle re for the femoral and the saphenous nerve to reduce the level of the CRPS. So I'm not worried about the saphenous nerve distribution at this level. I try to identify the patella tendon and I keep it. As you can see, I'm just above the colleague fascia, which is the extension of the scapa fascia. This is the vastus muscle. This is the tibial plateau. Now identify the joint line. That's the joint line. So we resect the tissue at the level of the joint line and below. You can see synovial fluid. I resect the patella tendon at the tibial attachment as long as possible. Try to preserve the patella tendon. We move medially at the tibial plateau. As soon as we go through the patella tendon, I flex the knee and then we continue the dissection. I resect the ACL and the PCL, the MCL. You can see the knee joint is coming forward now. I try to go deep. You can see by pulling the tissue forward, the knee is coming to the front. There are some genicular vessels that are attached. I continue with my flap posteriorly, resect the gastrox. You can see the process didn't take very long if you do it systematically. As part of amputation, I tend to perform nerve tissue reanastomosis to reduce the chance of phantom limb pain. So now I will identify the common peroneal nerve distribution as well as the tibial nerve. This is the common peroneal nerve. And if you follow the common peroneal nerve, you'll find the tibial nerve. This is the easy way of identifying nerve structures. The common peroneal nerve usually lies just posterior to the bicep femoris tendon. It's more posterior than one would anticipate. I use this as a section to identify structures. We follow the common peroneal nerve down in the thigh and the tibial nerve is just close to it. I perform targeted muscle reinnervation at this level. I resect the lateral gastroc as well as the medial end of the gastroc. The vessel appears at the back of the knee. You can see this is the popliteal artery. You can find the sural nerve of this level, which is here. We need to ligate the vessels. I'll put multiple ligatures into the vessel, considering that it's a very large artery and the chance of catastrophic bleeding is high if the ligature slips. Now that I ligated the vessels, I attend to the nerves. I do the targeted muscle reinnervation. We've done the nerve. The condyles with uni amputation are very bulky, so try to debulk the condyles in order to provide optimum fit for traditional mounted socket prosthesis. Try to maximize his chances by providing him with a load bearing end. This is the surface of the patella and severely arthritic, and that's the surface of his trochlea. 
The next step is to refashion the distal end of the femur in order to optimize a socket mounted prosthesis usage. I reshape the condyle. I shape the patella surface as well. We bring the end of the extensor mechanism with the patella over and just hold it in place over the femoral condo. I put one central drill and two concentric drills. I bury the screw heads. That's why I chose a locking screws in this case. You can use headless compression screws as well, but these are acting as strong bolts. Now I reconstruct the flexor mechanism of the knee to the extensor mechanism of the patella tendon. You can see the flexor is connected to the extensor. Then we proceed to close the medial side. The medial side of the wound is closed. Then we go back to the posterior side. We finish the posterior side of the wound. Lateral side of the wound is complete, medial side of the wound is complete, the joint or whatever is left of it is sealed, the patella is stable and now all what we need to do is to finish the flap. Ideally I prefer to use an interior flap to posterior flap, however it's a personal preference. Medially there's always overhanging tissue, more than what you want. So be mindful that you resect more tissue from the medial aspect. You can see how the flap is closing nicely. You can see over here there is significant overhanging of medial tissue. That needs to be resected. I temporarily put staples to identify my closure doggy. Often you may see an end wound that looks like a Mercedes-Benz sign and that is due to the overhanging medial tissue. The closure is performed in layers, done a vital fat layer and approximation of the uh, in edges with the clip, ensure that we can adequately close and then we'll proceed to the subcuticular running micro suture layer. The aim is to close the medial side which will often be tighter due to the redundant tissue resection and once that is closed we'll then proceed to the lateral side which completes our closure.